Kepler, six wickets for 25 runs, South Africa threw it away, didn't they? Well, it was an extraordinary day. South Africa were looking so good uh, earlier on in the day. And then suddenly, just in a, in a moment of madness, two quick wickets fell after T when Ashwell Prince got out and then A.B. de Villiers and the whole innings just fell apart. Yeah, what's, uh, what, what's kind of the mindset there? Because obviously a lot of the South African batsmen looked like they were trying to be positive, but it was also a bit of risk there as well, wasn't it? Well, there's nothing wrong with being positive, but Test Match Cricket is all about being ruthless, about occupying the crease for uh, long periods of time. You've got to be able to string partnerships together and you've got to have a good defence. So, uh, you know, all-out attack in, in, at Test Match level is always fraught with danger and that's exactly what led to South Africa's downfall today. Obviously, Newlands was uh, South Africa's first test match in 10 months. I haven't really played any test cricket really this year. Is that kind of now being reflected in just some of perhaps some of the shot selection, some of the way that the some of the, the concentration levels perhaps uh, today? Shouldn't be because it's a very experienced South African test lineup. They've all played a lot of test matches. They've all scored a lot of runs at test level, so they know exactly what what's required to succeed in the longer version of the game. But unfortunately, that sort of old-fashioned grit and determination just wasn't evident today. The, talking of old-fashioned grit and determination, Australia's bowlers were under a little bit of pressure, weren't they, for most of the day, it seemed, but they've come out looking pretty good, haven't they? Well, they have, and uh, they'll be very relieved because they lost Shane Watson early, so that was a big blow for them. And uh, South Africa were going so well. I mean, Jacques Cullis played really well, A.B. de Villiers played well, Ashwell Prince played well in patches, but just unfortunately lost wickets at the wrong time. And uh, I think South Africa will be the first to admit that they had Australia where they wanted them. But unfortunately, they let them back in. What do you make of Peter Siddle today? Because he was unlucky earlier on, didn't he? He had a couple of kind of ca catching chances and didn't quite work for him. But he's, he's come back well in this last session, hasn't he? Well, the good thing about Peter Siddle is he always gives you everything he's got. And, and by doing that, you know, he gets deliveries in the right areas and he always gives himself a chance. Sometimes he's a little bit expensive and perhaps at times he doesn't do quite enough with the ball. But you can't take anything away from his courage and the way that he runs in for his captain. What do you make of Pat Cummins on test debut? I thought he was excellent today. I thought, uh, if anything, he was probably the pick of the Australian bowlers. He looked uh, very promising. He bowled uh, a very good line and a very good length, and he bowled quickly and aggressively. And I thought he had a very good first day in test cricket. What do you make of, uh, of, of the, the, the spin option at the end now, Nathan Lyon and, and Michael Clark? Well, again, uh, surprising because Nathan Lyon posed no problems for South Africa earlier on in the day. In fact, it was a problem for Michael Clark because the South African batsmen came out and they dominated him. But then w once he got that wicket of Ashwell Prince, and it was a soft dismissal. I mean, Ashwell, I think when he looks at that again, he'll be annoyed because he missed out an opportunity to go and get on a big one. But once that happened, he was in the game. And, and then Michael Clark, of course, made a good bowling change to bring himself on. What did you make of uh, the kind of the conditions, I suppose, in this last session? Because it, it's pretty gloomy, isn't it? Well, it was. It was sort of murky, but uh, that's to be expected at the Wanderers. It often happens during the last session. I thought the pitch was an excellent one for Test cricket. It offered a good contest between bat and ball all day long. So South Africa, although they'll be disappointed that they got bowled out, they'll still feel that there's more than enough in the surface for them to bowl on tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, if we look ahead to uh, to day two, uh, as far as Australia are concerned, obviously their batting lineup is under a lot of pressure, isn't it? Well, they are. They're under massive pressure after that uh, debacle at Newlands. So they've got some demons to deal with themselves uh, first thing tomorrow. So they'll be hoping for, first of all, a good start. They'll be hoping for some partnerships uh, amongst the top six, and they'll be hoping that someone will go on and get a big hundred. And as far as South Africa is concerned, we, uh, I, I mean, as far as this wicket is concerned for South Africa, do you feel that, well, it won't be another 47, but, you know, kind of, what can we expect from them and their bowlers? Well, I think South Africa will fancy it. I think they're bowling really well. I think the likes of Dale Stein, Mornay Morkel and Vernon Philander could cause some problems on this surface. And they're very confident and they are bowling well, as I said. So I think South Africa will be disappointed with the batting effort, but they'll feel they're still right in the test match.